Hey guys, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores. It's your boy, Hibon, and I am the host of Toys in My Closet. And I'm very excited today to take a look at, as you see there in front of me, voila, the brand new <clears throat> NECA Toys, <clears throat> excuse me, Disney's Gargoyle Hudson Ultimate Figure, or action figure, right? We can't insult them. It is an action figure. So, I want to give a big shout out, first and foremost, and special thanks to my daughter, Elena, because this review and unboxing is made possible by her today, because she gifted this to daddy -o for his birthday last month, or actually this month, on the 13th of October. So, Thank you, daughter, for making this review and unboxing possible. So, as we can see, we start off with the front of the box. Absolutely stunning and gorgeous uh, illustration and artwork from the Hudson character himself. As you can see, it has a nice a snowy landscape on top of a what looks to be a clock tower. And you see that he has his whited eyes as they get angry and ready for battle with his sword on his hand and everything is par for the course like every ultimate box from NECA on the top you see it says Gargoyles Hudson and on the side you see we have a wonderful poem promotional shot right of the figure as you see in, you know, in a promotional uh, advertisement situation. Now, as we turn it to the other side, we have another promotional shot, this time with his alternate head, which you can see looks very similar to the artwork in the front of the box. And then lastly, in the back of the box, you see that we have another promotional shot, the Gargoyles logo with the font, and then we have a little bios, like it says, frozen in stone by day, flesh and blood winged warriors by night. Awakening after a thousand years, a band of powerful gargoyles. Well, actually, that's not a bios. That's actually the introduction that they used to use for the Disney cartoon in the intro. You see, you have some nice promotional shots there, there, there with all the different parts, faces, and stance, and hands, and weapons. And this is Bronx, which is sold separately. Then we have the actual, um, you know, cross-sell for the other figures. Like we have Goliath, Demona, Bronx, and I believe this guy here is uh, Brooklyn. And I forgot his name. And then the, the other green guy. But you guys know and you get the picture. I was never a big Gargoyles fan of the cartoon back in the day. But the way that NECA has created these figures to look so realistic with the mixture of their original look. And they look so cool. I just wanted to jump in the line. Plus, it's only a few characters. I just want the main characters. I thought it would be cool to collect them. And so far, I haven't been disappointed. So there is a picture of him in his window box opening, as you can see. Bring it up a little closer. It looks absolutely fantastic with all the things that it brings. And then a nice promotional shot there with him in the air with the wings and the backdrop, which looks really cool. And these are what they call Velcro uh, covers in the front. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's take a closer look and take this guy out of the packaging and see what he has to offer, if he's worth it, if he's not, or if he's going to be maybe a disappointment. So sit back, relax, enjoy a digital drink, and please come with the ride with your host T-Bot and see what Gargoyles Hudson is all about. And here we have Hudson out of packaging. And immediately right off, you know, the hip, the first thing you'll notice is the amazing amount of detail there is not only to the sculpt and the figure itself but the absolute stunning paint job that NECA has been able to achieve with these 
figures, and in this case, Hudson in particular. As you can see, we're going to take a closer look. We'll start off with the amazing face sculpt of Hudson with the washed out dark black eyes, which actually have a sheen to him in person, which makes it look almost like a real glistening eye. And in this side, he has a gold diamond look eye, but it's supposed to be, I guess, because he's blind from one eye, but it almost looks like it has a diamond in real life and it shines really, really nice. And then you have a nice sheen here, which you can't see on the camera, but it's a nice gray sheen uh, like uh, on his beard, like if it was glistening in real life, looking like real hair. That goes over the, his ears, which you see the very gargoyle-esque with the detail. He has the horns on the top, the thick eyebrows coming across with the line in the forehead, and these horns of gargoyles on the top of the actual eyebrows. See the two, you know, teeth coming out of the mouth with the grunt on the nose. Then the ball head area on the top and you see that he has the nice hair coming down, nicely sculpted and nicely painted with whites. And like I said, it has like a sheen in real life that makes it look like real hair glistening. You have the shoulder pauldrons that look like they've been in battle, war torn. You see, it has like a little design there, which you can't really see it really well, but it's supposed to look, I believe, like gargoyle, like another small gargoyle. Got a chip here in mind on this side, but it looks like it's from, you know, battle with the battle torn on the black and the silver. Then you see the color tone of the, the actual skin is a nice matte beige with light black highlights on it the wrist buckle right for the wrist black with that silvery touch in them and then the silver bolts you see that he has like a tank top made out of leather with that nice leather effect and weathering with a nice wash of weathering on it his big belt buckle looking like a Santa Claus belt with a gold buckle in the front with the nice leathery black look going towards the back as you can see with the holes there and then the sh the, the loincloth just kind of frilling down you see the buckles on the back that hold the shoulder pauldron and his shirt or his armor with these nice accents of gold attention to detail and then the loin cloth going down in the crotch area which you see is separate with nice black weathering and brown and beige color and then you see his thighs going across which looks like leathery cow maybe cow skin pants with the stitching on the side the wraps around his uh, shin with the what looks to be other brown um, or dark brown um, belt material tied up to tie up, you know, those wrappings on the shin guard, which are in beige. <clears throat> and then we go down to his toes, looking like a gargoyle itself with the arch. This is where it stands, and these are just the back part to balance it. But it looks absolutely stunning uh NECA really knows how to paint their figures and make them look absolutely incredible and it gives it a more sense of realism and realistic feel to the figure itself uh which is always a nice plus and touch uh so as far as it looks aesthetically uh he gets a straight 10 out of 10 so far so now let's take a look at what seems to be his accessories but in reality is the completion of his actual whole look like his tail and his wings for example and then exchange, you know, some exchanges of hands but let's take a closer look in a blinking of, of an eye right now so here we are here is his accessories but like I said it's not really accessories technically it's more like the the extra parts you need for his full look 
but he'd have to come separate because then the figure wouldn't fit in the box if it was built, right? And I actually really appreciate that NECA goes far and be, you know, far and beyond to try to give us things like extra straight of hands or, you know, like an extra portrait. But I think in this case with the gargoyles, it would have been better or they would have been better off if they would have just gave us one portrait that really had the dynamic of posing long term. Um, you know, for whatever way you want to look at, make them stoic, mean, but a combination with whatever weapon accessories they have, right? But on top of that, leave out all the hand displays, right? And instead of just giving us the one set of wings that are splayed open, give us the set of wings where they're closed that cover them almost like a blanket or a coat. Uh, because uh, it would give us the, you know, us the consumer, an easier way to display them uh, much easier right from the, you know, opening of the box and purchase because that's one of the biggest problems with these figures you, although they look absolutely gorgeous it's very hard to display them because these wings as you can see are extremely large and long they're probably about seven to eight inches in in length and that's just for one side so when it's all said and done it's about a 12 to 16 inch display from one wing to the other not including the middle so we're talking about 24 inches maybe of width which is very hard to and then they're made out of a harder plastic not a softer gummy plastic and I guess that's because it will be more weight to them and long term with these pegs with the weight they'll start to droop easier because if they're plastic they're much heavier if it's a soft plastic and this is just my opinion and my speculation. Don't take it for 100%, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm just assuming here based on my knowledge from collecting for many years. I love the tithering and the holes and the damage within the wings. Nice color. It will shade one side with, you know, the outline and wash. And then in the back is a darker shade with the scales that look almost human-like for the skin with a nice wingspan and then the, the veins of the hands, you know, you see, splaying out that hold the rest of the wing. So they look really good. And again, he comes with two, you know, the left and the right. Then he comes with this wonderful portrait, which is fantastic with a nice meaner and more menacing look with the hand and mouth wide open. Look at the detail with inside the mouth with the pinks and the tongue and then the whited out eyes, I think always works the best. Cause it makes them look really badass. Uh, so that's a beautiful and wonderful head scope uh, and portrait that they give you additionally to the one it brings. Then it comes with his tail, of course, which is a nice size also, but then it has a nice rubbery bendable uh, technology to it so that you can bend it. And that also adds a problem to the display because now you have to worry about how far back you can push them on the shelves and this actual tail makes it very difficult so as far as hands he has the two fisted hands then he comes with one kind of semi gripping open hand that looks like he would hold like a pipe or something then this closed fisted hands for the other side which holds the sword and he has another fisted side this looks like it might be for another type of weapon i'm not sure and then he comes with the two open, open, you know, um, open nail uh, hands. This is like, you know, so you can scratch the hell out of somebody because that's what part of the gargoyle's defense is. Their, their fingers and their nails. Uh, and they'll shred people to, you know, apart. But you see all the details, how nice it looks. And it looks really, really, really fantastic. So, that's as far as his accessories is and goes that's what he brings so what we'll do now is we'll put on his accessories or his features like his tail and whatnot and we'll take a we'll take a little closer look at his articulation and here you are as you can see there he is in all of his glory displayed and you see how far back i have to be from the box 
just to review him and just to take, give you a look at him. He looks massive and he looks absolutely imposing. A beautiful, beautiful piece and an eye looker for any display when someone comes to your home. So now let's take a real quick look and we're gonna bring the camera up right away and take a closer look at him. And all of his glory and see what his articulation entails and how does it work or how well does it or how well it doesn't work uh, with you know his wingspan and and things of that nature obviously so I'm trying to get this to stay uh, you know as straight as possible give me one second he's dipping to the side I'm so sorry for that so there we go let's push the camera back and now let's take a look at him a little closer so I'm gonna bring him over and you're gonna see that his head portrait moves slightly there, slightly there. He doesn't have no ability to look down at all. And he could look up just a tad. As far as his shoulder goes, obviously they move, you know, left to right to pretty much turn them completely 180 degrees. He just it got to really nudge it. As you can see, I'm nudging it, and it's giving me a hard time because of the fact that the wings are in the way. So bear with me. It's really, really uh, feisty, so to speak, but you can do it. There you go. So they do turn 180 degrees. Um, he has the bicep swivel, the double elbow goes up a lot then he has the you know swivel on the peg of the hands and in this case moves in and out he does have a waist swivel the wings move but you can take them out individually or I would advise take them out individually instead of just moving them like that so they don't uh, so that the, the actual peg, peg doesn't um, get stripped then he has a torso cut there which makes him move really good. You get tilted a little bit to the front and back, but not much. Um, you have the thigh swivel, which is minimal, but is there. And then you have a single on the knee. And then, of course, you have the ability to move his leg forward, backwards, and you can either sit it down and rest it that way, or put it in the traditional you know, a gargoyle uh, actual aesthetic and style, which should look like that. And then the tail uh, goes up and down with a little hinge, like so. And then again, it has flexibility. So the range of movement for the articulation is not bad. It's not bad, all things considering how big and large and cumbersome these gargoyle figures are really are um because again these figures the idea behind them is more for you know to have a beautiful display piece not really about um dynamic ranges and poses and stuff like that but you know that's that's really the main focus and idea behind behind them so you know it's to, to just so they could look good on the shelf. Let's bring this up as you can see. Let's show him off. And he looks, like I said, massive. He looks massive. He looks imposing. He looks really great. So, real quick, we can bring in his knife or his only accessory. And he does have somewhere to house it, a sheet, as you can see there. Right there. And you can either pose it like this. 
if you want to display them like this right with it or we'll just remove it and then you can put it on his hand like so and when you put it on his hand you can see he looks really cool and ready for battle and menacing and all that good stuff uh, I'm trying to put the uh, I'm trying to put the, the tail down to give him better balancing you know due to the fact that you know he's so tall he's so tall so you see he looks really dope really imposing see he looks really great uh, I think he's fantastic um, and he works well on a display case so now what I'll do is I'll bring in a couple of more winged style characters for compare and contrast so we can see and have an idea what they look like next to our brother Hudson. So here is a good example of what I was saying earlier. Here he is next to the McFarlane Toys Man Bat Deluxe figure from the DC Multiverse line. And this figure, as you can see, the wings were sculpted onto the hands. They're complete rubber. And this figure is super duper top heavy. It's so top heavy that the, it'll li literally lean over and fall at any moment unless you stand it specifically a certain way. And I always use the stand for him as well. At least with Hudson, you don't really have to do that. Now, what I will say is that the level of detail in these two figures is absolutely amazing. They look incredible next to each other. Um, but again, like I said, um, th this is something that's very difficult to display. As you see here on my camera frame, I cannot put them completely in frame because it just I have to put the camera way too back and I don't have enough range. Uh, and if I do, it's completely uncomfortable to capture the video footage. So. Excuse me for not letting you be able to see all of them, but you can see there as I pull back, you can see their legs or whatnot. Uh, it's just a little sacrifice I have to do for the figures being so big. So now let's let me show them next to some other figures that are winged. And here he is next to the Mythic Legions Four Horsemen. Um, I forget the name of this guy, but I thought it was Pestilence. As you can see, he's a winged guy that you can spread out the wings as well. I have him actually folded in because in this case, his wings are, um, they have a point of articulation somewhere around here where you can actually fold them down, which would also have worked well, I believe, with these um, gargoyle figures. Uh, maybe it would have cost... I made the cost go up a little bit more, but I definitely think it would have worked out better uh, long term as far as the longevity for the display option. So now we'll take a look at here he is next to the McFarlane Toys Spawn, I believe, villain or anti villain redeemer. And as you can see, he also is a winged, uh, a winged, a winged character um, and he also suffers from the same problem where McFarlane chose, chose <clears throat> to go with heavy plastic wings um, not as soft or as hard or rigid as these but still hard and because of it the wings are starting to flop and make the figures joints get loose and keel over so that's another example so now let's do the money shot really quick to end these comparisons. And here you go, here is the money shot. Here you have Goliath, Demona, and Hudson. I also have Brooklyn, but I don't have space to put them in the shot, so I left it as is. But there you have it, the trio so far of what NECA has released in this Gargoyle line. And together they look absolutely stunning. I cannot lie. <clears throat> so now let's go to the end of the review and my final thoughts. 
<clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> there you have it. <clears throat> there is my review on Hudson from NECA Toys from the Gargoyles Ultimate line. Now, what are my thoughts? Well, simple. The figure, as far as aesthetic goes, absolutely stunning. As you can see, there's no shortcomings. NECA spared no expense. They went all in. They gave you a highly detailed Hudson figure with a lot of posability and options as far as, you know, giving you an extra portrait, extra hands, and his weapon. Now, as you can see, I have him on the spinner, and he's not spinning. As far as display options, it's very limited because these wings, again, like I said, are rigid and do not fold or have any wiring system to allow you to fold them up or to even have a point of articulation somewhere in there where you can bend them down. And I get it, it's to keep the aesthetic look and probably this is to keep the cost down because although this figure comes with a lot of stuff, is highly detailed and painted very well with top quality paint, this figure still managed to stay around the $34.99 price range, which for a figure like this in today's day and age is very rare. So again, maybe NECA could have incorporated another set of wings with the closed sets of wings instead of giving you so many hands display. Or maybe NECA could have just put the articulation or maybe NECA could have just put the wiring. Whichever way they should have gone, I think would have been a better option than just these rigid wings. But I understand it was done more than likely to keep cost around the same price. But to be honest with you, NECA and Randy, because you guys are great and you listen to us and to your fan base very well. I really think that if you guys actually went the extra mile and did the other options of engineering, the fans would not mind paying a little extra for these figures because they're so elegant and so well done and executed. As far as I'm concerned, no one's going to complain about how these figures look and how they feel. So I really doubt they'll be upset if they had to pay, let's say maybe $10 more to get that better range of possibility with these wings. Just a thought there, not saying how to run your company. I'm just thinking you probably have maybe not as much faith on these figures uh, as far as how they'll sell or do than they actually are. I, I have not seen one person still say they hate these gargoyle figures. So that's just my thought. So I think the figure is excellent. I, it's definitely worthy to add to your collection, but it doesn't come without any shortcomings. It definitely has some shortcomings, but not because of lack of, of trying or because they don't care. It's just, you know, sometimes to keep price ranges a certain way and keep costs a certain way, you got to sacrifice in some corners. It just is what it is. It's the nature of the beast, the nature of this figure industry. So, guys, let me know what you think down below about Hudson. If you like the figure, if you enjoyed it, if you think he's smashing amazing, or if you think he's utter trash, and if you're going to pick him up or not, let me know in the comments below because it's good for conversation. Give me a thumbs up if you like my review. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Please share this with someone you think might like it because it really would go, go a long way and help me out and I would really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. And remember, if you had the decency to at least subscribe, uh, it means the world to me because I know you didn't have to. But remember, since you did, I consider you now of a part of my family. As always, for all you that continue to give me the love and support, thank you because without you, this channel would have been dead and not sustained a long time ago. As always, you can find me in social media outlets on Twitter and Instagram. It's all down in the description down below. If you guys ever want to help me out in any way, shape or form in this for this channel because you love what I do and because it'll help me out in big ways and help me to do bigger and better things down the road. There is a way you can do so. It's down in the description as well with my Patreon and PayPal information. And one last thing, if you want me to maybe showcase something, you would like to donate something to the channel for me to take a look at, highlight, and 
kind of review it the way I did here. There is a way you can do so. It's down. Uh, it's All you have to do basically is hit me up in one of those social media DMs. And uh, we'll work out the particulars and how to get it to me and what needs to be done. You know, and remember, it would be a pleasure and an honor for me to do so. Because, you know, you guys are what make things possible and make this channel all worth the time. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Here is my review and thoughts of the NECA Gargoyles figure from the Ultimate NECA line. Uh, and this is Hudson. And he is fantastic. I'll see you guys soon. Keep collecting. Be safe while doing it. But also keep in mind, have consider consideration with others because we're still in trying times. I'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye.